right, so Michael, in 19, you, as I understand it, you're talking about uh, that this plasticity will um, sometimes uh, involve trade-offs around survival and reproduction, and I uh, recall that most of the women who were in the death camps stopped having their period immediately, and I wonder if this is an example of uh, an evolutionary response to high stress situation, basically saying we're going to turn off this this part of the the, the 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 body that consumes a lot of energy to give us a better shot of surviving. Was that what happened? And um, could you tell us a bit more about these trade offs anyway? Well, in in one sense, the answer to your query about amenorrhea in severely starved females is yes, that probably does to some extent help them to survive. There's actually another trade-off that may be even more important for humans shutting down the reproduction, and that is if you're very badly nourished as a female, it's probably not uh, energetically advisable to become pregnant because that oh, fetus yes. is going to be sucking all kinds of resources from you, and it needs those resources to come to term. So evolutionarily, the fact that mammals have this very striking response reproductively to their level of nutrition in terms of calories and also the quality of their nutrition in terms of available amino acids and fats is completely in conformity with what we expect given the idea of phenotypic plasticity. You close the, uh, your discussion on 19 with uh, uh, some observations about how lethargic um, Western uh, people tend to become, particularly as they get older. Um, and I, I was wondering, I, the vision I had in my own mind of this big python with a with a with a deer in it or something. And uh, you, you have some thoughts about this, and I wonder if you could share them. Well, uh, actually, I, I thought of something now that I, I should have put in uh, 19, but I didn't, and that is. Um, for hunter-gatherer populations, lactation is birth control. Uh, the lactating mother, who's devoting all of those that caloric energy and the amino acids and fats into nourishing her infant child, usually is infertile. But this trade-off between survival and reproduction during lactation is obscured in industrial populations because we live with this endless onslaught of large quantities of calories. So in fact for us that particular pattern of phenotypic plasticity, that little lactation cue that controls when we reproduce no longer works. So what you have is the industrial way of life obliterating part of our phenotypic plasticity. Is, is, is the, are the instructions still there? In other words, Michael, if in fact there was um uh, yeah, not a lot of calories around, would that kick in again? My bet is absolutely. If you were to revert as a lactating mother to a hunter-gatherer diet and lifestyle, which means probably more activity than, yes. than young mothers have now in industrial societies, I would expect the lactation birth control trick to come back into play. Because, because several... They, so, so, so several people I know have thought that they weren't going to get pregnant again. And they did. Um, yes, so that's because they were... That. Yeah, well, my explanation is not unique to me. Um, I mean, we in an industrial pattern of nutrition, industrial pattern of activity, are dealing with a completely novel environment in which rules and patterns that worked for hunter-gatherers uh, are basically no longer working. To a limited extent, at young ages, this may be because of our actual adaptation to agricultural conditions uh, in long-standing agricultural populations. Of course, whatever happens in people who are taken from the hunter-gatherer lifestyle and in one generation start to eat junk food in a large metropolis, you're looking there at the naked impact of industrial foods on a human population that has had no evolutionary preparation yeah. arising from a transitional agricultural phase in its evolution. Uh, I mean, the First Nations community here has just been devastated by that. Um, you close them. I wonder if we could come back, though, to this uh, lethargy that we see. Ah, yes. Um, well, 
So if in the same way that the industrial lifestyle can obliterate convenient trade-offs like the lactation birth control trade-off pattern, it probably also is completely messing with our response to nutrition and opportunity in terms of our activity. And, and my point of view is, you know, it, it's, it's like trying to find your way. I'm, I'm using a metaphor here. You try to find your way through a fun house or a horror house in an amusement park. And you're, of course, have a lack of light and flashing lights going off on you. And you stumble around and you trip over things. And it's very hard to navigate. To me, that's what's happening to our physiology in the evolutionarily novel environmental setting provided by industrial lifestyles. Our bodies are trying to find their way through this opaque and confusing and, for your body, fairly nightmarish and bizarre setting in order to, you know, to speak um, anthropomorphically, to fulfill the mission Hmm. uh, of, of reproducing. And surviving in that context, the completely bizarre and distorted and evolutionarily novel environment that we are stuck with over the last 150 years, our bodies get messed up, messed up even more than they were by uh, agricultural ways of life. Yes. Now, somebody might argue against me, yes, but there's some good things about the industrial way of life, like you know, soap and antiseptic surgery, and I will say yes. There are some good things about the industrial lifestyle. I'm not saying it's all bad, but I will assert nonetheless that in terms of phenotypic plasticity, our bodies are very confused by the bizarre signals we get from our daily diets, from our pa the pattern of illumination that assaults us in the evening, from uh, the, our exposure to the pheromones and viruses of the innumerable people we encounter during the day. This is a funhouse, bizarro environment for us to deal with physiologically. Is this why I, I've just been made aware of some statistics on Prince Edward Island, which I bet are common, but at least I know these are current and real. Um, in PEI, the average man becomes so disabled by decrepitude and you know, type 2 diabetes and all the other things uh, that he, that he basically is helpless by the age of 65 and he lives in this state of helplessness almost total disability for another 9.7 years and, 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 and this is the and women by the way the whole thing is just push 5 years on they last another 5 years before they fall off the, the, the cliff it, it, is this the result of being in the fun house Yes. In a word, yes. I think that is basically due to completely dysfunctional metabolic signaling from being in an evolutionarily novel and bizarre environment. Right. And the, and the way out of this is? The way out of this is explained in the 55 Theses. You're cruel. <laughs> <laughs>